today I want to talk a little bit about base running and more specifically advancing on balls in the dirt. It's a part of the game that not a lot of people pay attention to. They don't practice it, but it's just as big a part of the game as anything else. We work so hard on sacrifice bunting, uh, moving guys around, um, situational hitting, hitting behind runners, sack flies, we work on all that stuff a lot. But a ball in the dirt can work the same way. It's, it's just a different means of advancing a base runner to another base. And a lot of times if we can advance that way, we won't have to sacrifice an out by uh, hitting the ball the other way, uh, giving yourself up, sack bunting. We're only allowed 27 outs in a game, and the more outs we can save and move runners up other ways by advancing on pass balls, things like that, it's going to help us out in the long run. So the first thing I want to talk about is that this is something that can be learned, and it can be harped upon to the point where the team will do it and it will become part of the team. If you watch enough baseball, you'll notice the teams that do some of these things do it all the time, and the teams that don't do a lot of these things don't do it. And the teams that do it a lot do it well, just like the teams that don't do it. If they do try, they usually don't do it as well. So it's a, it's a skill that can be learned, just like any other part of baseball. You just have to work on it, you have to put in your time, and it'll get better. And believe me, it's a huge part of the game. So a couple of things I want to talk about um, first off is technique, how we're going to do it. The first thing before you do anything is mindset, and it needs to be aggressive. A lot of teams, especially teams that might not have big time power in the order, guys that can just score a guy from first base because they're going to hit a home run or score yourself, and we need to play a little bit more situational baseball, those teams are, have an aggressive mindset. So they're always looking to take a base however they can. When you get on first, you think, how can I get the second? I want to get the second any way I possibly can. And a lot of times you think, I'm not going to depend on the hitter to put me over to second base. I can get over to second base with my skills by balls in the dirt, stealing bases, stuff like that. But right now we're thinking balls in the dirt. So it's an aggressive mindset. First things first, aggressive. And this can be implemented by the coach. You want to make sure that your players understand we want to be on the aggressive, not on the defense. And also, if we make a read, go with your gut read, just go. If you, if you read down angle, ball in the dirt, go. You get thrown out a second, hey, no big deal. You made the out aggressively, if you want to coach like that. Now, that's the way I would recommend coaching. If you expect your team to do some of these things and you're not going to have that mindset, it's not going to work. So first thing, aggressive. Second thing, mechanically, what are we going to do? There's a couple ways to do it. One of the biggest ways is it's going to start with your lead at first base and also your secondary lead. So we need to be aggressive off and aggressive back. So on our, we, we want a big lead at first or a good aggressive lead. Learn what you can do at first base, how far you can get off, and still make it back successfully. You want to do this in practice, get someone on the mound, uh, have them pick over, and get to the point where you know you can get back, but you've got an aggressive lead. Uh, second thing is what I said, aggressive off, aggressive back with our secondary. So when we take our secondary lead, we want shuffle, shuffle, but we want to make it hard. We don't want to go shuffle, shuffle, very slow, and then jog back. We want to get out there and get back hard. First step, once we go shuffle, shuffle, we see no action, a ball is taken or swung through, boom, we need a crossover step, and we got to get back quick. It's very important because once teams see that we're aggressive, they're going to put the play on for a back pick at first base from the catcher. And if we're lazy at first base, we'll get picked off, whole plan backfires. That's the second thing. The third thing, now we need to look at the pitcher. And what you want to read is ball out of his hand. You want to track the ball from the hand to the plate and read down angle. A lot of times, especially in counts 0-2, 1-2, counts that we think, hey, there could be a spiked curveball here, a ball in the dirt. We need to make sure that we follow from the hand to the catcher. And if we notice down angle to where, hey, we can pick it up, this ball's not going to reach the plate, we go right there. A lot of times, especially at younger levels, what you'll see is you'll see a ball thrown on a down angle, bounce, hit the catcher, bounce off. You'll look down, and the, and the player is then reading, hmm, should I go? And then he breaks. Well, by that point, we're too late a lot of the times. 
by the time we see all that happen and process it and go, some of the better catchers will be able to bounce to their feet, pick up the ball, and still throw you out. So what we need to do is, is go quicker. We need to make our decision quick and go with our gut instinct, our reaction. We see down angle. Right when we see it, we go. Now the catcher's got to drop to his knees, block the ball, get up, pick the ball up. By the time that's all happening, you're safe. Now every now and then, maybe he gets lucky, he goes to block it, and the ball somehow goes right into his glove. He's up, throws a second base. Hey, we'll live with it. That might happen a couple percent of the time, but 90, 95% of the time when we read down angle, that's, the catcher will not be that fortunate. We're going to get second base. So that's how we really want to do it is read the ball out of the hand. A lot of things you'll see with players is once the pitcher goes into his windup or leg kick like this, the pitcher will just go to home plate, stare into home plate, and we lose all this valuable information of the ball traveling to the plate. And that's when players get surprised. They see it in the dirt and bounce off, and then they get frozen for a second, and then they try to go. So make sure we're reading it out of the, out of the uh, pitcher's hands. And that's the big way we're going to get a jump. One of the things that this will do, even if we're not able, or even if we get thrown out a few times, the thing it's going to do is it's going to put pressure on the defense. If the pitcher knows, man, these guys are super aggressive at first base, and if I throw anything in the dirt, they're going. Well, maybe that will eliminate a couple of curveballs, a couple of spiked ones that he's trying to get the, uh, the, pitter, the hitter to chase. So anything that could make him get off of his game plan because he's worried about us is going to help the team, whether we get the second base or not. Also what it's going to do, it puts a little bit more pressure on the catcher. He knows guys go every time the ball's in the dirt. Well, now he's thinking, man, I've got to block this ball. Anytime we can make him think about a little bit harder about what he has to do, adds a little bit of pressure to him. Same thing with guys that get off hard. Like we said, if the ball's not in the dirt and we're getting off hard, Man, that puts a lot of pressure on that catcher to get ready to throw every single time because, hey, these guys like to run. They're, they're very aggressive on the bases. So even if we're not advancing, it still helps our game out offensively. Adds a little bit of pressure to the defense. They try to do things a little bit quicker. And sometimes when we rush, bad things happen. So that's what you want to do, take advantage of balls in the dirt from first base. You can do it from second base also, but just make sure you do a few of those things. It's going to really help out your team. And over the course of a season, a couple of bases here and there add to a couple of wins, and a lot of times that will be enough to get you into the playoffs or whatever type of format you guys are playing in. So I hope this helps. Give it a shot. See how it works. Thanks, guys.